this is the third session of uh, the Human, uh, Human Security for All conference organized by and with the partners of uh, the Yena Declaration. The Yena Declaration is a project uh, on the cultural approach to sustainability and human security for all. And WAS is together with the Club of Rome, uh, the International Council of Philosophy and Science, Human Sciences, several national commissions for UNESCO and many other partners, one of the founding partners of it. This session shall encourage the arts and artists from all fields of expression to engage for human security for all, especially in education, and give the opportunity to highlight their contributions to it. Before I leave the floor, or leave the floor for the panelists, uh, uh, please let me introduce myself very briefly. I'm the founder and holder of the UNESCO Chair on Global Understanding for Sustainability at the Friedrich Schiller University of Jena, initiator of the Jena Declaration, a vast fellow and the moderation of this, moderator of this session. We uh, contribute much time of this session for, for discussion. And uh, first among the panelists, and these panelists are Marguerite Berrier from Paris, Mila Popovic from Montenegro, uh, Maria Rashidi from uh, Paris, Chris Wilmot from Zurich, and Ralph Weiss from Germany. After that, after the short self-representation, the panel will answer the questions submitted by the viewers through uh, the chat. But now first, a brief self-introduction by the speakers. Ladies first, Mila, please go ahead. Um, I am currently serving as the Director General of the Directorate for Interculturalism at the Government of Montenegro. And uh, I am on board of um, World Academy serving as a trustee. I've been in the Academy for more than 12 or so years. Um, I'm also a founder of Evolving Leadership why I'm mentioning that is because it's important that for more than a decade, I've been focused on developing leadership both and ushering sort of a new model of social and business leadership, um, which is very significant uh, in relationship to, to the human security uh, project. I am myself a practicing artist in performing arts, multiple dance forms and a poet also for probably more than 30 years. So this is briefly a sketch and all of these um, facts about my professional and personal life will actually converge in the presentation in relation to the human security. Okay. And uh, then uh, Miriam. Sure. Thank you very much for this uh, honor and invitation for me to take part in this very important conference. It's an honor to be presenting along with you distinguished speakers. So my name is Mariam Rashidi. I'm an independent researcher if I can say, with more than 14 years of research and related professional experiences, all of which revolve around the global ambition to place art and culture at the forefront of research policy and innovation for social transformations and also for sustainable development. And my work may broadly be characterized as interdisciplinary and intersectoral knowledge transfer. I've lived, studied, and worked in Iran, Australia, and now in France, and I'm also a scientific advisor to civil society organizations and initiatives, notably Arts and Education Association, Memoirs de l'Avenir, uh, with uh, Miss uh, Marguerite Berrier, who is also a panelist here, and also with Project and Magazine, Humanities, Arts, and Society, which is an initiative of UNESCO Most, CIPSH, and MDA, uh, Memoirs de l'Avenir, and also a regional research program of the Civil Society Network uh, here, uh, Civil Society Network of North of France, which is entitled L'Universo, uh, whose mission is to research and publish about models of governance, business, and cooperation in French civil society organizations, namely associations, as they call them in France mostly. And so I look forward to our discussions in this very important session on arts education in the context of this human security for all um, campaign. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Next one, maybe Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Okay, uh, right. Uh, yes, so thank you, uh, Professor Benno, panelists and audience for listening to a UK management consultant who's turned himself into an emerging climate artist. Uh, my link with uh, Zurich is through Klimanowska, an organization that's uh, concerned with science and art. 
I'm interested in coastal cities because coastal cities, exposed ones, will not survive 20 or 80 centimeters of sea level rise. That's a multi-dimensional HS4A problem for all aspects of city life and all businesses. Coastal cities, coastal universities, coastal citizens are threatened with submerging underwater. Artistically, rising sea levels are irreversible. So I asked the question in my art, how might we live well underwater? This is a new perspective on terrestrial ways of living. It's a multi-dimensional question, it's ambiguous. It launches an underwater symbiotic imaginary for a coastal city. An artistic way to implement the Jena de Declaration, to raise HS4A awareness and support the reinvention of both education and coastal cities. So I start at the bottom with citizens. I ask citizens, or would like to, how might we live well underwater? Ask all of city life. Architects, accountants, artists, feminists, faith groups, journalists, health and well-being, disabled, young, LGBT plus, and so on. And then I want their responses as poems or stories of four lines and in surrealist art, digital or traditional. Because Andre Breton explicitly described the surrealist project in terms of underwater submersion. And the idea of living underwater is surreal, is it not? And 2024 is the 100th anniversary of Breton's surrealist manifesto. Responses to the imaginary I would like responses to the question I would like to exhibit in the imaginary alongside scientific research, coastal city plans for dealing with rising sea levels, these things work downwards. And the responses are a survey providing data for knowledge. So the imaginary is a radical art agency methodology for thought and action for interconnected imaginaries in Melbourne, New York, Naples, and other coastal cities for annual editions until 2030, until the end of the UNESCO Decade of the Oceans, triggering new alliances across communities and cultures with transdisciplinary and so on cooperation. I look forward, hopefully, to partnering with coastal cities or humanities or civil engineering departments of coastal universities or business schools. This is art for revolutionizing the sustainable development education system for raising human security awareness. Thank you. Thank you, okay. uh, Ralph. And then after that, I think until then, Marguerite will be ready for us. Ralph, please. Thank you, Benno. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to join the conference and to join, of course, uh, this uh, session. I don't have uh, such a beautiful carpet as Chris or such a beautiful painting as Mila. Therefore, I do have um, two slides and I just join uh, two slides uh, with you. So my, my connection, uh, as you can see, is the connection between arts and sustainable development. Um, I'm the chairman of a network on sustainability in arts and culture. This is a German network, which was founded uh, some seven years ago. Uh, this is a nonprofit network, as you can see. And uh, my background is uh, background as cultural scientist and also as uh, business in business administration. And speaking about our network, um, there are more than 700 different cultural institutions, associations, individuals, and other players connected with our network, and not only in Germany, but uh, there is uh, one other uh, country, Switzerland, uh, where our network is situated, and also Austria and Europe. Um, at the beginning, in the introduction, I want to share with you one focus. Uh, this is a focus with the project we are running in Germany, uh, funded by the national government. Uh, it's called Culture for Climate, and it's the connection uh, between the cultural sector and uh, also arts institu institutions 
with sustainable development and of course climate protection and climate adaptation and uh, to make the connection to arts uh, there are five principles and uh, two principles connect to our session today to education because um, in this uh, declaration uh, which is uh, written by a lot of German institutions uh, two main points are um, education and education for sustainable development and cultural education so this is where I will be mainly speaking and um, this, of course, in the context of human security in this uh, big age and new age of the Anthropocene. So that's for the moment from my side. Okay, thank you very much, Ralph. And now finally, Margaret, I wanted to start with you, but we had some technical problems. So now you can go ahead, please, Margaret. Glad to meet you all. Uh, bonjour, uh, I'm an artist. I was inspired by artists always that, and personalities that were engaged in the reflection of multidisciplinary work on crucial topics and righteousness concerning all beings and all things. And I ask myself always how to contribute with the arts and why with the arts and what is the arts. And I have to thank very much Professor Berno Werlem that we worked together already since 2016. And all those questions and reflection have been our underlying process for many years now. I founded the organization Memoir de la Venir in 2003, and uh, together with UNESCO MOS in the International Year of Global Understanding in 2016, Igor, Professor Beno, uh, and the International Council for Philosophy and Human Sciences, SIPSH, we have started the Humanities, Arts, and Society project. Uh, first for the World Humanities Conference in 2017 and then beyond. And I work with Mariam very closely also on all those subjects. Thank you very much. Has is a collective of artists, of scholars, and mostly project holders from all regions of the world, transcending all location, all personal differences, all illustrating and enhancing the understanding of realities, of limits that all of us face, cultural references of languages and of symbols, of ethics and aesthetic as one. For me, all human actions are based upon cultural, social, and ethical construction of knowledge, of interpretation, obviously, where one is, and of engagement of each and every one, and of course, of awareness. The arts allied with all fields of science, and that's a little bit the subject of our discussion today, uh, is part of the process of enhancing creativity and imagining a new future. And I put future with S. Seeking to connect global problems with emerging local solutions. Our aims is not to simply echo existing concepts, nor to reproduce creative projects that already are going on all around the world, but rather examine new issues, or not new issues, but issues that we all live through, which has to do with inequality, conflicts all around the world, migrations, and take out the EM before the immigration, biodiversities, climate issues, gender issues, and contribute to new scheme of activities of resilience that encode all of them first in the humanities and the arts as one relating to science and to civic society. Uh, collaborating on essential and critical issues such as well-being and the security of each, working on various uh, aspects as education, diversities, histories, and I put the H and the E in between parentheses, and I add a S to the word history, bio network, climate changes, peace, human and non-human rights, care issues all around the world, while considering individual and cultural plural, plural, pluralistic understanding of traditions and of the world. Now, why the arts? Because the arts and artists bridge the gap between people, continents, culture, civilization, and time. It seems obvious, but not obvious to everyone. The arts mirror the entire journey of the humanities ever since, because humanity is an ongoing research into the nature of being, but also the nature of the world. Now, how with the arts? The arts allow us, allow us to question, to think, to propose, to produce, it illustrates the roads from nature to culture. So sharing knowledge and 
competences leads to deepening of our understanding of ourselves to start with and of the world afterwards and inside the responsibility of each beyond rights to act and to participate. At least me, I don't know anywhere in the world any people that have no language, no arts, and no culture. And therefore, artists provide new ways to discover, to influence, to provoke, to propose, and to perform. Thus, I think, to enhance the security of all living together in, in respect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Margalit. Um, before I start the discussion among the panelists, I would like uh, to invite our viewers to ask questions through the chat. All the panelists can see them, so you can also follow the, the questions that are submitted and make your, uh, get you prepared to, to answer them. But first of all, I would like to ask the panelists that they, I mean, we got already a lot of um, uh, important points mentioned, the self-representation. Um, very often uh, people are seeing the role of arts as mirroring somehow the bio-geo research in, in climate change, in, in uh, biodiversity loss and so on. But um, uh, the panelists uh, present here, I know that, you, that we are seeing this a little, little bit differently. We are thinking that the arts, one of the role of the arts or one of the jobs of the arts is to expand the mindsets of people's mindsets, to, to start to think their, their own life in different ways, to, to think the futures of uh, society in different ways as we as no, normal in everyday uh, duties engaged people uh, can, 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 can make it. So taking that as the key point uh, of arts in the whole transformation process, also towards um, human security for all or enhancing human security uh, for all. What are your experience so far in transdisciplinary cooperation? I mean, all this is only possible in transdisciplinary cooperation, meaning science, all different parts of science, but also the arts and humanities and civil society. So I see the role of the arts by expanding the mindset as an important catalyst, as an important bridge builder between the different parts of society through new imaginations. What are your experiences in that, in that, uh, in that project, in that vision, in that work? so far, and then we can discuss how to overcome the difficulties you may have uh, identified in that in that process. Who wants to take the word first? Mila? I am Perfect. talking Go about ahead. building bridges, particularly with institutions and creating models of working with the public and the civic sector and building those bridges in basically creating institutional foundations for those bridges and those relationships. So not only having, say, civic society giving its input um, or feedback to institutions, but rather institutions taking it so seriously that they create a specific unit, a specific entity that is dedicated to building a new, um, new cultural code for engaging um, the entire system, societal system, as well as a new cultural field that will hold that possibility together. And that is why I'm, I want to talk today about the Directorate for Interculturalism, which is, I mean, I have to tell you, after the first research we have done through 193 countries, we're the very first institution of that particular kind to this point in the world coming from a tiny country of Montenegro that has a that can share a point of pride that we have always been seen in the Balkans, especially in these very sensitive times, political times. I mean, we are in Europe and we are in these times at the intersection of East and West and in the Balkans, um, speaking of human security, right? Uh, we have always been viewed um, differently, dare I say, which I do dare say, as bastard children of Europe, which is an absolute, an 
complete absurdity, <laughs> historically, culturally, in, in every way. And to have a tiny little country with ancient history that has declared itself the first um, ecological country in 91, I mean, this is exactly speaking about social leadership, speaking about social artistry, to at the times of civil war, be able to declare yourself the first ecological state in, in, in the world in 91. And now I think Montenegro is actually initiating a certain kind of social artist leadership by saying we need a directorate for interculturalism, not only, not only, to unite the social being within the country, which will in fact, by its geostrategic position, contribute to peace in Europe. Integrating ourselves internally will contribute to the peace in the region, in the Balkans, by extension to Europe, and possibly model what the, the consciousness of interculture could be um, in the world. Right. We have a situation that also at one point Montenegro was um, the host country of to 12 percent of its population were refugees. Now we have digital nomads that came to us because of good environment and good lifestyle um, after COVID. Now we have climate <laughs> migrants. Now we have war migrants. Now we have rich people coming because we have good water. We have mm -hmm. cultural and biodiversity that is unmatched, one of the top in Europe in the world. What does that mean? That means that you have a set of concentric circles of mixing cultures coming right now in a tiny, tiny country, right? Where you can at the same time have, at the same time, have a very explosive situation or you can be the very nexus of peace. And we are deciding that now. How do you integrate people that have, have hundreds of years, if not thousands, of deep culture and multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-conventional society, plus all these layers of people that are coming in? Not to mention the fact that we are, like I said, at a very particular geostrategic place. So... I can come back to this, but I want to say that we exactly decided to approach the notion of human security through art. And then to create an inclusive, integrating dialogue model to do that. So I will keep it brief and maybe I can later share a couple of slides for you, but how did we decide to do this? Of course, you start immediately from youth, you start immediately from action, not from a platform. We, I have to honor the Ministry of Human and Minority Rights where we open this new institution. And one of you have already mentioned um, human rights that are gonna be at the core of future uh, paradigm of, of human development because this is the era, post-information era. This is the era of conscious technology and the battleground and the battlefield will be identity time and mobility. So with that, knowing all that, we did not have time to go through platforms first. The government was eager to open this. I took the leadership and I'm very grateful that they recognized because I'm a newcomer here. I'm an American and a Montenegrin. Um, mm -hmm. And what we did, we went to action straight. And we worked, um, created an event called Direct Intercultura, which is understandable, which means that we took a shot of culture, like a vitamin that we needed and worked with youth and um, climate action and all action was involved unavoidably because this is the generation that carries the global issues on their shoulder with full consciousness of it. So I'm just describing this quickly and I will define, uh, this will be my last point. And Very if we sure. come over to this, mm -hmm. I will just define what interculturalism is then. The multiculturalism is the reality in the world of any country, any village, let alone city. That is a fact. But interculturalism is social consciousness, attitude towards life and all life, as well as now um, political agenda and public policy and an institution towards creating culture of interbeing, consciousness and conscious about 
profound interconnectedness of all beings and our responsibility, public and private, individual and collective, to create human security through that consciousness. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, very impressive example of just illustrating. Uh, Mariam, maybe also a little bit your background, uh, maybe a little bit shorter, hopefully, because we have only uh, uh, 20 minutes left. Uh, actually, also, I had um, pre prepared something which I will for the beginning, but then since we started with brief introductions, I will leave that for my conclusion. I think that will be a nice conclusion, actually. But briefly to mention my experience in, in terms of uh, transdisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity uh, crossing with the arts and creativity. My research to date has been fundamentally interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary at its core in theme and content, as well as in process and methodologies. It has traversed an atypical trajectory uh, spanning the arts, the humanities and social sciences, and increasingly data science uh, as, and cloud technologies, as well as different uh, institutional and cultural settings. These undertakings have culminated into two main projects. The first, which I completed in the framework of my PhD in interdisciplinary and cross-cultural studies, it investigated the social and scientific utility of contemporary art, specifically the art uh, and the genre of socially engaged art, which uh, emerged in the 1990s and has uh, become really the paradigmatic genre of contemporary art uh, to the present. And the second project is an ongoing research and innovation project which aims to create digital cultural ecosystems for the multi-level governance of sustainable development. Currently in the post prototype phase, I created a digital prototype of this, um, this digital cultural ecosystem. Um, so the project is currently in the post prototype phase and it is a project that I founded and have worked on based on my research some years ago in the culture sector of UNESCO on the 2005 Convention on the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expressions. And then subsequently, I continued in connection with the experts and networks in Europe and the United States. So I guess what fundamentally aligns my research with the theme of this conference and this session is that I understand the human, society, human security for all approach to be recapturing the ambitions of United Nations SDGs, but re-articulating them really in a more intuitive and human-centered and less technocratic fashion than the SDGs have turned out to be. And so the arts and arts education, so far as I have engaged with them in my research, are perfectly aligned with the nuances of this approach. And as I said in, in the following questions and also in the in the conclusion, I will also mention a very specific uh, outlook to this question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe, Chris, I mean, with your project, uh, Cities on the Water, um, you are probably, uh, this is probably a very challenging concept. <laughs> uh, uh, what is your experience if you talk to, to politicians, to city governments uh, in, in in that situation, what do they tell you if you come up with your ideas? Oh, usually I, I have not had many discussions with city mayors, but I look forward to them and I look forward to their eyes opening in horror at the sudden realization of certain things that uh, maybe they are or are not uh, um, aware of. But if I can put my answer back to your, your first question about experience yeah. with transdisciplinary approaches. Mm. Uh, it, it, the, the, the question is, is multidimensional. The, the answers are multidimensional. And mm. I could stand here for six hours and I still wouldn't <laughs> cover all of the dimensions. Uh, but I would just pick one word, culture. So I often work with a Swiss poet. He has one culture, I have another. When we collaborate, we have to invent a joint culture. And uh, we do that automatically. We started collaborating e even before we had even met. We've never met physically. But the point about it is that we have a, an approach, a creative approach that creates sparks, and that's the culture. 
that's the culture that you need in collaborative and interdisciplinary uh, work. And you don't need to worry about the fact that Western culture is not the same as Asian culture. Mm. It's the creativity culture. And if I may, I, I'll, I'll give you a quote from Richard Green, theoretical physicist, and he defines what creativity in art is, and I totally align with Richard Green. He says, the arts provide an arena unbounded by the structures of truth and everyday physical reality, allowing the mind to jump and twist and tumble as it explores all manner of imagined novelty. A mind that sticks to what is true is a mind that explores a wholly limited realm of possibility, but a mind that becomes accustomed to freely crossing the boundary between what is real and what is imagined is a mind that becomes adept at breaking the bonds of conventional thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, I think Richard Green thinking is art culture thinking and breaking the bonds, the bounds of conventional thinking in coastal cities is part of what my undersea symbiotic imaginary is all about. And it's symbiotic because of the things that Mariam and Mila have already mentioned. Interconnections between humans, interconnections between human and non-human life. So, thank you. Thank you very much, wonderful. So you can see that transdisciplinary is to, to make the imagined real, potentially. Ah. <laughs> uh, Ralph, uh, what is your, your observation in your work? Um, I think I can, can um, adjust to, to what Chris said uh, with a quote before I give you uh, one or two experience as well. Uh, my quote is by Joseph Beuys, uh, mm -hmm. who said, arts uh, is the only way to solve environmental problems well, it's a big saying, and uh, somehow we have to say solving isn't quite the right word. Uh, we are speaking, when we are speaking about the arts and culture, about a kind of ontology. I just want to use the word ontology. And uh, many of you in the panel uh, said similar things. Uh, it's not only the way we are working or um, society is working. It's about the mode, uh, the ontology mode. And um, art is a mode of aesthetics and of ethics and not of uh, rationality. So we need more aesthetics and more ethics than rationality and functionality. So this is um, connecting to boys. And well, one or two experiences in this field. Um, we know that sustainable development has been um, uh, defined a lot by natural sciences and by, by economy. And what cultural and arts institutions are doing now, they are bringing climate change uh, to concerts and to theater and create new images and, um, and hit uh, this inner side. So we have to, um, to distinguish between external ontologies and internal in, uh, ontologies. And culture and art is internal mode, internal ontology. Uh, so th maybe this is one example where a lot of cultural institutions and arts artists are putting forward this uh, new kind of ontology and an inner kind of mode. Beno, do you mind? I know it's Margalit's turn, but a very, very brief comment here, which we need to be very careful with. Ralph, I absolutely uh, go by very everything brief. you've okay. said with a tiny correction. We have to be careful not to, to reproduce arts against rationality again and creativity versus rationality. In fact, what you just said, I'm just basically supporting by you by saying that ethics and aesthetics are the finest kind of rationality. 
Mm. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Margarit, you have a long experience uh, the intersection, humanities, arts, and social engagements, may, even the name of your, your enterprise, of your, of your project. What are your um, uh, observations and, ex uh, and experiences? Well, first of all, thank you, because what everybody said, each one uh, is definitely one angle of what we can say all together for a few hours, so, and we don't have this time. I would start with the first that creativity is, is, is giving to everyone, it's innate. It's part of the virtue of being, being also human, but also all kind of all all other beings, animals, and whatever. So, creativity has to be enhanced by our work constantly. I will add that security is living also with knowledge, with respect between all the being, englobing care issues, awareness, responsibility, uh, giving the rights to each one. At the same time, that it teaching each one to be responsible of their own acts compared to the others, get to know the other in an inclusive world, the rights for education for all, meaning also education for women, for girls, for children. That's all the work we have been taking under our work in the last 20 years. Uh, develop critical thinking using always the arts, never using another form of, of what we call formal education, but going through creativity, sensitivity, intuition and arts, change the model, get out of the box. So not say that logic is contrary to intuition and, and sensibility, but oppositely, ethic and aesthetic is one road. So we would start with, you know, saying like, workshop training for artists is extremely important. That's, I'm talking about our experience, why? Artists often find themselves on the margin of society. They don't know how to get involved, how to work with others. We have created some tools which are exchangeable tools. They are not in any way dogmatic form of education, but it's an inclusive experience where we have artists work together with scientists, with project holders, and teach them how to use creativity in different situations so they can go ahead and start to work on the field. Then develop field projects with artists, scholars, project holder, on various STEM, from living together and respect, which everywhere in the world today, like said before by Mila, we all live in intercultural environment and, and multidisciplinary world, speaking many languages and getting to know each other, must to get to know. And then how to use uh, arts working on gender issue, on global knowledge, even on mathematics. We have right now projects that has to do with how to understand how humanity has understood the world, question, question about the functioning of the world and how we accumulated information and critical thinking about what is right and what is wrong in order to progress and in order to get out of the box and use what we know in a creative way. And then after using transdisciplinary work with scholars, with project holders, also dealing with uh, ecology issues, uh, always use recycling material and always using what we call sensitive and intuitive education to allow each one to participate. There is not a person without knowledge, without culture and without a language. So all our participants, uh, whatever they are, women, isolated person, isolated youth, prisoners, they all have what to say. We also use journey of dialogue in for example, Museum of Via Patrimonies as the mirror and the window on the infinite histories. And again, I put the H and the I in between parentheses and add an S on the word stories, histories, identities, pluralism, memories, individual and collective differences, traditions, habits. The arts is a mirror of all the journey of humanities and it's a fantastic tool to get to learn what happened, what is happening, how do we see the future? And questioning together all those very fine notions that are for me philosophical notion, what is liberty? When liberty stops, where is the limit? What is democracy? Many people use today the word democracy, but is what is the notion of democracy and living together in laicite, in, in societies? What are the religion? What are this? the reason of living and believing, uh, living in a republic, 
why the patrimonies are the mirror of this journey, infinite journey of learning. Stop segmentation and segregation and get everything across each other beyond boundaries and beyond politics. And I think that's the way to get us to work together. I try to solve the problem the following way. Uh, in my view, we can overcome all these frictions that have been mentioned that are problematic if we take a wider perspective. If we are seeing our job to create a culture to live sustainably, cultures to live sustainably. So arts, of course, is then part of a huge project integrating science, politics, and, and so on. And my question, last question, and I ask for a short statement, and this is then the, the summary of all, hopefully. <laughs> uh, what is, in your view, uh, the key point of the contribution of all kinds of arts, from cooking, from painting, from dancing, from whatever, uh, what creativity involves uh, in the establishment of cultures to live for living sustainably. Uh, I'm asking for a one minute statement of each of you and then we are holding exactly the time that I could allocate it to us. <laughs> Who wants to start? If I, if I may link your question with some of the key concepts that were raised just now by Ralph, especially Amar Galit. So maybe I will read my conclusion, two minute conclusion, just very briefly um, to uh, actually address these points. Um, so for me, the arts are known to be central to the management of social transformations and the global challenges of sustainability and human security. Whether or what, to what extent this potential can be realized depends on what I heuristically call ways of thinking about art. So that is our ontological conceptions of art itself and the frameworks we use to explain its practical intersections with social and scientific domains. Why do I say heuristic? As a heuristic, ways of thinking has allowed me to articulate an inherently realist conv conviction that what art is held to be delineates what there is to study in art and about art uh, in, in given practices and determines how to study it and vice versa applied art studies can lead to redefining and reforming accepted conceptualizations of art arts education is key to fostering ways of thinking that will either place art within or exclude it from global problem solving the current dominant way of thinking about art is rooted in enlightenment aesthetic philosophy Aesthetics since modernity has become the regime of identification of art and, and asserting its distinction from non-art, namely law and science. I contend that, this, that aesthetics is no longer adequate for defending art's utility in addressing global risks associated with reflexive modernization, the contemporary condition under which we live. It is now imperative to reconstruct the knowledge base of art itself in terms of reflexivity, which I argue integrates and exceeds aesthetics. I've reconstructed a first-in-kind epistemic architecture of reflexivity for explaining the transversal utility of contemporary art. In a nutshell, it posits a paradigmatic shift, one, from the concept of art as institution to art as ecosystem of institutions, peoples, places, and practices, two, from the concept of artwork as object to artwork as ad hoc, situated and emergent constellations of epistemologies and methodologies. Three, from aesthetic legitimation and social critique of individual artworks to identifying generative mechanisms within and across artistic constellations. Three implications can be drawn from arts education relative to issues of sustainability and human security. Beyond defending aesthetic singularity of art, art education must now mainstream artistic co-construction of public policies and models of governance. Two, it must build on the participatory practices of contemporary art to foster citizen sciences. And three, to embrace it must embrace the, tech, the technical know-how of other disciplines to enable artistic practice in different contexts, but also it must integrate the know-why of those disciplines 
to invent new modes of reasoning about art's transversal utility. Thank you. I'm glad I could finally read my <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. For Maria. Ben, could I, could I be very brief and to the point so that you have another person out of the way? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> most, important, <laughs> Go ahead. most importantly here, um, part of the human security is the larger concept is not only to attend to the present, but the only way you can attend to the present if you have the reference to the future. So I want to honor the fact that key part of this is the right to future to begin with, to begin with. And a central part of that is to see that the technological innovation, not that is coming, that is already here, which is the grand convergence of artificial intelligence, nanotechnology and synthetic biology. We stand no chance without that being matched by the finest of social innovation in order to ethically and hopefully aesthetically for a more beautiful and better world, all those technologies be used. I want to honor the work of the Millennium Project and the dimension of the future thinking and future creating and future visioning that they add to this conference or to the thinking of that kind, because without the understanding of the future of being the, and the right to future, we will have none. And arts and culture are central, absolutely central to that. For any further things, I will just draw your attention that the World Academy already published an article paper that I co-wrote with a colleague called Systemic Engagement of the Arts and Culture, a new framework for integral transformative strategies. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, <laughs> it's yours. Thank you. I will try and do it in 60 seconds, but I may fail. <laughs> no, no, take, take more than art. that. <laughs> art is not the object. You don't find art in the object. Art is what goes on in people's minds. So remember that. Art is not technology. It is not AI. It is not digital. The medium that is used is irrelevant. It's what goes on in people's minds. In my practice, <laughs> I start with a poem. I convert the poem into a painting. A poet converts my painting into another poem. I can then convert those artworks into video. Or it can be digital or it can be puppets. I can convert it into scenery for opera, for dance, for a production of Gotterdammerung in New York when it's underwater. It doesn't matter where the art process laterally takes you mm. into different mediums and different ideas. Wherever you end up, you still have a route back to the original poetry. And that's why I want citizens of coastal cities to write those first words because that way, wherever the art ends up, they are taken along with it. So they become integrated in art and the civic process and civil engineering, all of the things that everyone has talked about. That's it. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Ralph and then Margaret and whatever <laughs> yes, you want. I'm I'm pleased not to have the final words. <laughs> so, uh, the last word. <laughs> may, maybe some 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 thoughts. Um, one point. Well, art is potential future. Uh, it's it's uh, new possibilities, and uh, maybe it's uh, potential for different future. And we don't have to stick to the past, uh, but to be open for new future or futures. Um, uh, one point. Second point, we had that uh, art reveals that um, uh, culture is constructed and it can help to construct uh, future cultures uh, of sustainability. Then maybe we are speaking uh, about different understandings of art, we need a wide um, enlarged understanding of art, uh, even in everyday mm. life, 
connecting uh, again to boys and even an enlarged understanding of uh, culture. And last point, uh, not only in Germany, also in Europe, there is a guiding principle for culture, which is culture for all. Uh, in my opinion, we need an enlarged understanding there or a different understanding uh, going in the direction of general culture of uh, sustainability. So it's not the amount of culture, but uh, the, the type of culture uh, uh, for all um, people on the earth. Okay, perfect. Can I have one last comment, Benno? You can, <laughs> yes, go ahead. Ralph, you mentioned Joseph Boys. Boys said, anyone can be an artist. It's different. So everybody is an artist. Everybody is an artist. Yeah. So I it's think different. you can build on that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Mila and Margalit. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with Chris and Ralph, and that's what I said before. Creativity is innate. It's part of ourselves. It's our virtue. <laughs> Uh, and so I, I would say it real fast because we don't have much time. But for me, art, arts, artists engage in the eye of the mind, like said Plato, and they go beyond the immediate revealed sense, transcending all differences and experiences. And again, I repeat, I'm sorry, but it's important to get to know global knowledge. Act. Each one of us can act in his own level, wherever one is, uh, and use always ethic and aesthetic as one. They are not separate. Foster inclusive, sustainable change for all being and for all things. We have to take care of the river. We have to take care of the mountain. We have to take care of trees, of the, of the bees. <laughs> uh, uh, creativity is attributing to innovation. So it's part of us, of every one of us. Imagine uh, why the horizons, they are part of the process of imagining a new future. Um, I like to use also a, a, a sentence uh, that Louis Ostenberg, we share work together with Benno often, says the arts do not replace science. They are not reductible to the concern of science, but they are participating in the process of developing creativity, the imagination of new future, of diversities, and of critical thinking. So it's not changing one another, but it's being together. And I like to end with two sentences. The arts are the reflection of all human path, permanent research into the nature of being and of the nature of the world. And they provide the keys for each one, wherever he is, as small and as big, to question, to think, to propose, to produce, and to illustrate the ways from knowledge to action, like often project holders do, and they're not necessarily artists, but they should work with artists, because each local initiative contribute to a common research and to a global sense. You know? And uh, I, I like to use a sentence of someone I really like very much is Aimé César that guided my road also. Uh, in his Cahier de Pays Natal, the Retour au Pays Natal, he says, I do not conceive that an artist can remain an indifferent spectator refusing to take an option. To be committed means for an artist to be inserted in the social context, to be the flesh of the people, to live the problem of his country with intensity and to give testimony, testimony to it. So I think that's our role as artists to work with you all people. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thank you very much, Marguerite. And thank you. Uh, I would summarize this session uh, According to a sentence that has produced by Witold in the first uh, Yeno Declaration session uh, yesterday, he said, in technology, we need to move from me to we. And we, I think we can transform this in the, in the topic of this session. Mm -hmm. To transform the me as artist to we as the creators of our future in a in an artistic way. I think that could be something like uh, a summary of, uh, of all the statements uh, produced here in the last. Thank you very much. Thank you, all thank the you panelists. Very, thank you, thank you very much, Benno, and everybody. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's stay in touch. Thank you. Thank